Greetings, folks. This is your old friend Brad coming at you live from Utah's Hogel Zoo today on Thursday. It's cold in northern Utah, cold and wet. But we're outside at the zoo, and boy, do we have a fabulous Facebook Live plan for all of you today. As you can see, we're taking every kind of precaution while we're out in the zoo, hence the mask. I will try to speak up. Really encourage your comments and questions, especially from the younger set, so send those our way. I look forward to seeing some of those roll in. Before I introduce our guest and we talk a little bit about what you can expect during this live, please remember to support your zoo. There's very uh, uh, many ways to do that through the zoo website. Uh, so, so go to the online store. Of course, the best way to support your zoo is to purchase a zoo membership. That is uh, going to be great because we are going to reopen, folks. I, there's not a lot of things I can guarantee, but I do guarantee that. Also, there's a donate button you see on the screen. Any donations would be very much appreciated during this time of our closure. All right, let's get going. I'm going to whip the camera around and introduce our special guest, the fabulous Jason from the Animal Care Team. Jason, where are we and what are we going to be talking about? We're up here at the Markor Yard, and we're going to be talking our four Markor boys here. Uh, Lisa's feeding Asia. They love their, their tasty treats. She's getting, he's getting some grapes. Um, behind Asia is Dusty. He has the most judgiest face. Look at him judging us right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and then the two in the back are Dash and Farah. And we're going to be doing a quick little training session with them. And then after the training session, we will get, try we to go. get some weights on them. Oh, fantastic. You know, uh, I love them. Roughly about six years old as well. And they came to Hogel Zoo from the Bronx Zoo. From the Bronx Zoo. And they're located here on the southern edge of Asian Highlands because they're from Asia. Yeah, Central right? Asia and Western Himalayan area. Fantastic. All right, we'll follow you guys in. I remember when we got these guys five years ago, their horns were quite... Oh, they were, uh, they were. I mean, hardly non-existent. Oh yeah, much, and they, right? they were probably be about a quarter of the size they are now as well. And now they're just beautiful, just amazing. Spelling out nicely. They got their nice big bushy beards. Their horns are getting nice and twisty. And they. Oh, hey, happy yes. birthday, Spencer in we'll Wyoming! Keep, Thanks for joining us. We'll just keep walking up this way. Duck under your camera. No, you're good. Look how nimble they are standing right on this log, folks. Yep, and if you want to come up. Thank you, Jennifer. This oh, yeah, okay. this way, yeah. Following you. Yep. Hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, you can just come around this way. The other guys might take a little while to get down here. Thank you, <laughs> Tiffany, for your donation. Thanks for tuning in every week. We sure, guys. I hope you enjoy them. And yeah, I am a little nervous about them smacking me with their horns. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. Jason, what do they eat? Um, so in the wild, these guys are just going to eat grasses, leaves, bark, little twigs. Um, here at Hogel Zoo, we give them mostly hay. Um, mostly they'll get hay. A, uh -huh. They'll get treats while we do training with them. Just a high reward makes them more, encourages them to participate a little better. But then they'll snag on the grasses and the leaves that fall down as well here at the zoo. Oh, I see. Sure. Um, that's, uh, if Asia doesn't push everybody around, she can target them pretty much wherever they need to go or we want them to go. And then the little shapes on the ground are their stations. So as you can see, Dash here staying on his station. Asia's up there on his station. And then Dusty in the back is on his station. Farah, Farah is, is, yeah, he is the, he's the lowest one on the totem pole. So all the people in here Makes them a little leery of what's going on. Sure, because that's unusual to yes. have folks. Yeah, folks in, in here. here with their cameras and yeah, microphones. Sure, what's going on? Um, yeah, the tips will break off a little bit. Um, you can see they're not quite. You can see on Dash, especially his right or his left, our right, the tip is broken off a little bit. And that'll just come from sparring with things, sparring with each other. Um, it's made out of keratin, the same thing as our fingernails. So it'll just chip off every now and then. Yeah. Normally it's a seasonal thing when they're getting ready to breed. The males will fight for the, the female herds uh, to do breeding. 
Um, here, since they're all boys, they'll just get playful and they'll just spar with each other every now and then. I see. Oh, Fair came over by his station now. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm loving all these heart signs and thumbs <laughs> up, you guys. Thanks so much. Now, these guys are some of my favorite animals for sure. Now, uh, the, I, I was asked a question that the keepers can, you can come in to this exhibit, right, to train them yes. like we're seeing here and to feed them and such. Yeah. Certainly not the case with other animals. Um, no, and even uh, a lot of facilities won't go in with their marker. We were fortunate we got them young, so we got in there around them when they're about a year old. So they're used to us just moving around them and being kind of part of their herd. That is a, that is a valid, that is a valid uh, point. Um, what does their diet usually consist of? Um, mainly grasses, leaves, um, bark. That's what they're going to be eating in the wild. And, they, and I see they get away. Are those grapes? Those are grapes, yes. Three, three and a half feet. About three, three and a half feet. So, <laughs> yeah. wow, these so can still grow a little more. They can still grow a little bit more. And how fast can they run? That's a question from Maggie. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not really sure. I would say at least 30 miles an hour. <laughs> at least, th well, that's that's getting up These there. These guys can, can get moving pretty pretty good when something spooks them. Now we're as fast as I can run. That's great. That's, oh, you're pretty quick. <laughs> you have some gold medals. <laughs> okay. Now, are th are these guys related? Then that was a question. Um, they're d probably by the same father, but they all probably have different mothers. Um, that's usually how how herds work. Her herds work uh, is they'll I have see. one. I see. Okay, why don't you, uh, Jason, uh, let us know their names again. Okay. We, you mentioned it early on, yes. but and the camera. And the camera. Yeah. Um, so the one with Lisa. Okay. Is Dash. Dash. Um, Dash. He's probably the friendliest one. Um, most easygoing one. And the one back there that's just going to is Asia. He's the most dominant one. Asia back there. Um, yeah, Let's he can see. be a jerk sometimes. Right there. <laughs> kind of pushy. He's king of the hill. <laughs> yes. Um, and then the, the one, one on that the she's hill. going to now is Dusty. Oh, and Dusty, Dusty is, over there behind he's, Dash. He's the coolest one. Oh. He kind of just hangs out. He does his own thing, judges you a lot. <laughs> those, those goat eyes. Um, and then the smallest one in the back is Farah. Yes. I think he's the most handsome, handsome one. Um, but he is uh, the least dominant one, so he... He gets pushed around a lot by the others. Yeah, uh, Julie, thank you for, for that. Uh, just when you think you've seen all of Asian Highlands, folks, don't mm -hmm. forget to come up that south pathway. That's where yeah. these guys are located in their exhibit. <laughs> so <laughs> he's eyeballing me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Asian Highlands is more than just about the big cats. Yep. Most zoo animals are going to live longer, um, just better diet, better health care. Um, in the wild, though, these guys are averaging 10 to 13 years. In zoos, it'll be in that maybe 15, 16 years. Jill, they're about five years old. And who's the oldest one? Just to, that, you said, uh, that's from, you said they're all probably from the same. Yeah, Asia is the oldest one. Okay. And they're only by a, a few months. Hey, Lisa, Amy the volunteer said. <laughs> And we'll go down here. Lisa's getting ready to they are try to get them on the Becky. platform scale. Okay, let's go down. And but this is a real treat, <laughs> folks, to watch them get weighed. Testament to the hard work our keepers put in every day, working with not just the markhor, but really all of our animals. Maybe it, it <laughs> never ceases to amaze me <laughs> what you're able to uh, have them do with their training and such. And yeah, and the I'm kind of curious about the, the pickup between the males and the females. Are there some different colorations? <coughs> Um, they'll still get kind of the twist, but not as many as as the males get, and they're smaller than the males as well. They're probably closer to like 80 pounds. These guys are. Oh, so these boys weigh about 130 pounds, guys. Well, I know some of well, you Asia, asked. Well, Asia's like 180 something. Oh. <laughs> we keep getting questions about the about the ramming through the day <laughs> with them too. Do they, do they ever, <laughs> have you ever felt like they're going to ram you? Uh, I, I know that they spar with each other. Um, not really. These guys, when they do spar with each other, it's one of them looks for the higher ground to come down on them with, with their um, horns. 
But these guys are, for us, Asia will kind of, his back hair will go up a little bit, and I'll start kind of walking sideways. And then you can just, you just tell him, you're like, stop it, knock that off. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's impressed with you. Just. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do want to see a video, we posted one earlier on our Facebook page of Ben Starr, so you can see it there. Most of their communication is going to be visual, um, just turning sideways, looking, trying to puff up and look bigger than they are. And is that the scale that they're stepping on now? Yes. That, uh, yeah, let me kind of slide over here. You see <laughs> them go up on that piece of plywood. 158. Or 158. I think he went down a little bit. Or maybe he went up. Yep, he went down 10 pounds. Someone needs more courage. <laughs> Um, as you can see, Asia is. <laughs> I'm sure they take on a day-to-day -day basis. And we see. Now, uh, somebody asked why their horns grow in curly. Do do we know that? Um, I'm not sure. Is that a Mother Nature question? I think that's a Mother Nature. Yeah, question. I think so too. <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> it's just one of the remarkable yeah. aspects of the animal kingdom, folks. What sets these animals apart from many others. But when they were first discovered, uh, a lot of people, um, their their names, because oh. uh, their horns looked like snakes. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> These guys obviously don't eat snakes. They're herbivores, and they, yeah. may, they may try to investigate what a snake is, but not eat it. Sure. <laughs> and what is the tail? Yeah, we can show it. We got his other face there. <laughs> Um, aren't going to fluctuate that much like an elephant. Week to week, it, it may be a, a pound. If it is something drastic, then we need to like figure out what, what's going on with them. It was from uh, November. Okay, so it's been a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, buddy. There's so, a nice close look. Yep, that's Dash. Like I said, he's definitely the friendliest one. <laughs> He'll come and check you out, see if you have any food. Uh, d d somebody asked if these horns with the male help them attract a mate. Is it um, part of that? You know, I not, know the female have horns. Not really. They they compete for females. Sheep, so they're fighting each other with them. So I, I mean, the bigger, stronger the horns you got, they probably help other than that. Oh, sh a... sure. That's cute. That's right. Antlers fall <laughs> off. Even I knew that. I was not testing you. I was just reminding. <laughs> Yes. Deer and elk, they shed their antlers every year. These guys do not. Uh, I would guess if you frightened these guys, they'd come at you and gore you, but... Yeah, it depends. They're most, most likely they're going to run. They're Unless just going to run, through. yeah. And then they, they'll come at you. Um, these guys, nothing really phases them too much except for helicopters. They don't like helicopters flying over their heads. Ah, <laughs> yes. That's that's true with many of our animals for sure. In the wild, these guys, their predators are going to be like the snow leopards, um, lynx. So they live at higher altitudes in, yeah. in Asia, yeah? Yeah, they, so I'm in the summertime, they'll be up at a higher elevation, and when once winter rolls in, they'll come down to the lower, more oh, sure. areas. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. curious about their rock climbing capabilities. Um, these guys are great rock climbers. Um, they'll, they'll see them on our rocks just bouncing around all over them. They can bounce off the walls. So they're pretty agile. Their hooves are kind of soft as well to help grip in snow and ice. And yeah, I've seen them around on the rocks up here, and there's, there's one coming up from up there. Yeah, that is dusty. Special hello to Grandma Bobbins. Thank you for up joining there. us every time. Now, what, now, how long does it take their horns to grow in? Thank you, Heather. Uh, maturity, they're going to mature, um, I believe, probably around like three to four years of age. So um, they, that's when they start growing their horns? Uh, they're, they're growing their horns from birth, though. Oh, from birth. Yeah. Okay. So it takes three to four years to reach full length. Oh, full, to reach full maturity. Full maturity. But the, their horns mm -hmm. are going to continuously grow. But like I was saying earlier, they're going to chip off and wear down a little bit. Now, are these guys threatened or endangered they in the wild? Endangered. They are endangered, yeah. folks. And uh, we have four of them, George. Thank you for that question. So yes. 
You said this, oh. this scale smells like cats? Yeah. Which, yeah. which cats was this at last time, do you know? Joey, this is a Markor. M-A-R-K-H-O-R. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, these guys are definitely aware of their Not yaks. smell. So, <laughs> so, I mean, so she was saying it may smell like the tigers, the snow leopards, the armored leopards, the lynx. It smell like all those guys. <laughs> and even under human care, that, that instinct is still there when they smell yeah, that. It's still going to be, whoa, what is this? Do I need to be scared of it? If it smells like I should be scared of it, but it's not doing anything, so I'm just going to keep my distance kind of attitude. Right. Yes, Melissa, just south of the cats on our south pathway is where you can see the markhor. Right across from the tigers. So when we open, folks, again, and hopefully it won't be uh, long, we're hoping, uh, come take a look at these guys. They're easily missed if you're not watching for them as you walk up and down the south, the south pathway. So these are, again, the markhor. We have four of them. They're absolutely stunning animals. Some of my favorite at the zoo, among uh, my many favorite animals. I just love the markhor. So thanks to Jason. Thank you for your time so much. And of course, my partner in crime here, Jeff, handling everything on Instagram at 1130 with another fabulous Facebook Live. Thanks for tuning in. Until tomorrow, don't forget to always be a champion for wildlife. And I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.